Hello, welcome back. This is Kenshin1913, and we are Let's Playing Gabriel Knight, The Beast Within. In the last episode, we learned all about Ludwig II. I hope you took notes, because there's going to be a pop quiz. And in this episode, we're going to learn all about Wagner. Again, take notes. Pop quiz. Wagner's piano. On this piano, the maestro composed his later operas, including The Ring. Hold that one about the girl in the VCR. Franz Liszt, composer. Whoops. Franz Liszt, composer and Cosima Wagner's father. Hmm. Richard Wagner. The, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Let's look at the sofa. The death of Wagner. On Ash Wednesday, 1883. Wagner suffered a heart attack in a Venetian gondola on the way to San Michel. His wife and the gondolier carried him into a church where he regained consciousness. Wagner died four days later on this sofa. What a shame. Wagner died on that sofa. That's kind of creepy. Yeah, why would they preserve it? Wagner's death mask. What about his death hand? Where's Wagner's death note? It looks like an architectural drawing of a theater. The Wittelsbacher Theater, München. Every square inch is measured. That's kind of cool. It's a letter from a Monsieur Beaujolais, dated September 1881. Looks like he's discussing acoustics and sound waves and crystals. Wasn't Wagner's Bayreuth Theater already built? Why would Wagner be worrying about acoustics? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he wants to make it sound the best. The great patron himself. Ludwig II. Ludwig as the classical Greek hero. What do we got here? A portrait given as a gift from Ludwig to Wagner. June 10th, 1881, Munich residence. Great friend, I am writing to you in the middle of the night. My blood is pounding too wildly for sleep. Tonight's performance, how can I describe it? I am unsure whether to be terrified or thrilled. Perhaps I even feel hopeful. If it is hope, you have given it to me, my friend, for the first time in years. We must speak. Something happened during the music tonight, but I must have your absolute confidence. As you love me, come at once. Your devoted king, Ludwig. So yeah, he called, uh, Ludwig called him the great friend. July 1882. Great and beloved king, Monsieur Beaujolais and I have finished the diagram. We check the figures many times and Monsieur is confident that it will work. Eight identical fixtures are to be made from the diagram and placed in the theater exactly as specified. I'm sending the diagram with your courier. Be full of hope and have courage. All will be well. Your own, Wagner. Mm, so... Ludwig's death mask. Another one? So yeah, they apparently kept quite a correspondence, I guess. These look like production designs. I don't see anything that looks like those wolf paintings in Neuschwanstein, though. What about these? These look like production designs. I don't see anything that looks like those wolf paintings in Neuschwanstein, though. Yeah, they still look pretty cool, though, you gotta admit. This must be a model of Wagner's own theater, here in Bayreuth. Opera costumes. Wagner souvenirs. Don't think I need any of those. Yeah, you never... Wagner souvenir. What's never that know. book in the case? Cosima Wagner's journal. It's locked up for preservation. Huh. That's pretty nice. Let's talk to you, your, your, what was your name? What George? are you doing here if the museum is closed? They always like to have a caretaker here. It's a good job for me. I can uh, 
soak in the atmosphere of the maestro while I compose. What are you composing? This? Oh, a new arrangement. One of Wagner's pieces. For the Beirut Opera? <laughs> no, no, no. I am only a student uh, at the university. I study music, uh, composition, conducting. So you're not a conductor? Is there much of a call for conductors in Europe? Ask my brother. He is the conductor for the Munich Opera. Oh, nice. Well, that's convenient. Does that mean you get free opera tickets? Yes. I get a week's pass to the Opernfestspiele, the uh, opera festival in Munich. Oh, it starts nice. in a few months. Hope I'm still around to see it. Come with me if you like. If you're still around, I can go backstage and uh, all sorts of things. I'd love that. If I'm still in Germany, I'll call you, all right? Yeah, yeah look good. Look at that. He's going to get her numbers. Look at these two hooking up. How about that? Tell me about Wagner. <sighs> he was a character. He spent most of his life trying to convince rich patrons to subsidize his work. Unfortunately, he had expensive tastes. You see, he believed that someone of his genius deserved to live well. Can't argue with that. But Ludwig II supported him, didn't he? Yeah, sure, but Ludwig came along very late in Wagner's life. By then, he had already been run out of Venice and uh, yeah, most major cities because of death. Ludwig saved him. And the music. Best thing Ludwig ever did. Oh, so he doesn't like Ludwig. Do you know anything about that letter from Wagner to Ludwig in the display case? The one about the diagram? Ah. No. <laughs> Some sort of equipment for Ludwig's theater. But I don't know why Wagner would have cared about this. If he was worried about any theater, you would think it would have been his own theater here in Bayreuth. Well, probably be because, like, something was going on. Have you ever them. heard about the letter that Ludwig wrote to the Munich conductor in 1882 telling him to prepare for a new Wagner opera? You're full of surprises for an American. What do you know about it? No one knows anything about it. It's like a treasure map, you know? It's probably a complete fairy tale, but uh, it does make you wonder. You have no idea what it could have referred to? Maybe something that Wagner was working on with Ludwig? If there was, there's no trace of it. Except perhaps in the dreams of unemployed music students. Hmm. Like yourself. Well, not really like you, but uh, I guess, well, no, because you're technically employed, what whatever. Have you ever heard Semantics. about the wolf panels in the singer's hall at Neuschwanstein? Did my brother send you here? No. <laughs> Probably not. It's only the letter to the conductor, the wolf panel. Oh, my brother thinks I am crazy because of all my theories. What theories? <laughs> this is quatsch. If there was a lost opera, a lost Wagner opera, and if one could find it to a conductor, this would be like finding King Tut's tomb. But people have looked for it before. If but it ever existed, it is gone forever. But what's your theory on it? My brother says I waste my time even thinking about it. What's your theory on it, though? Is it, is it the wolf play? Somewhere? I'm curious. Is there any other information that points to the lost opera besides Ludwig's letter and the wolf panels? It's nothing. <laughs> I'm not even supposed to have seen it. What is it? You see, my brother says that Wagner was too egotistical to have produced a lost opera. If he was working on something new, every person in Bayreuth would have heard about it. On the other hand, it was in Ludwig's character to have wanted a private opera. But it wouldn't have been private. Ludwig's letter shows he intended it to be played in Munich. Yes, but that it would get so far without Wagner telling others? Why keep it a secret? Maybe there was a very good reason for secrecy. Yeah, 
and maybe mm -hmm. they needed someone For to example. listen to it. Like Never mind. You don't even you don't even know Grace. You got you got nothing. I don't have anything to ask Georg about at the moment. Alright, Georg, it's been a pleasure. It's been a goddamn pleasure. Now back to Ritter's We've done enough with the museums for the time being. We've done our little tour of Italy, I mean Germany. Anyways, let's head back in. There's Gerda. Hi Gerda. I'm back. Good. Oh, they're happy now, huh? Let's talk to her. Gerda? Yes? Look, see down there all nice and shit. Have you heard from Gabriel at all? No, Grace, I'm sorry. Never mind. Um, let's see. Hmm. I might have missed something. Maybe I'm, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's see. I did all that. I saw the one on the whole panels that I the museum. Hmm. Talk to the grumpy woman, blah, 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 blah. Did all that. Did all that. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I gotta go back in here. I don't have any No messages, eh? What's heading here, I guess? Let's sit down, I guess. Alright, let's see. <sighs> Professor Barkley will call when he finds out something. Oh, okay. Apparently... Let's go talk to the Smith or something. <clears throat> Where the hell did they go? Are the Smiths in their room? Yeah, I believe so. Could you ask them to come down, please? Oh, yeah, not too late. Now you just tell Merle what's going on. All right, let's ask about the Ludwig dream. I had a dream last night. I didn't remember it at first, but I saw something today at one of the museums. What was the dream? I was being chased in the woods by wolves. And I saw a sleigh. Ludwig was inside. He pulled me up, and I thought I was safe. But then he turned into a wolf. Hmm. So what do you think, Mother? A dream of rescue is a spiritual guide dream. The high priestess in Gabriel's cards must be linked to Ludwig somehow. What do the wolves represent? I'm a psychic, dear, not Freud. But the warning I got was about the black wolf, wasn't it? And the wolves in the dream... It must be the same danger. It's so frustrating. The more I find out, the more questions I have. Why don't you try a little communicating of your own? Ludwig's the link. Appeal to him. The answers may not come right away, but at least you'll give the guide something specific to say the next time she contacts you. Isn't there any way that you could, you know, 
do a psychic reading on Ludwig or something? To tell you the truth, I've been trying all day to make contact. But I only feel great despair. Mm, it's too busy. Ludwig's soul is not at peace. He's too busy. He's sick and tired. I'd better go. Anytime you need us, stop by. And be careful now. Unless Thanks. we're in bed. Then screw you. Well, she's screwed. Anyways, that's about it here. Let's see if Gerda has any messages for me. I don't have anything. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why she'd want to see that. I don't know either, but apparently I'm missing something. Hmm. At least I have. What am I missing? Hmm. Let's see. I checked everything out here. I pretty much checked everything out. I don't think the guards want to be bothered while on duty. I played it there, I played it here, I played the tape here. Play the tape here. Let's see. Yep, over here. In the cavern. Over here. Over here. There's the door. Yeah, I just played the tape everywhere over there. Now uh, you know what? Let's get a hint, I guess. Persian Shrinking. Shrinking. Apparently I'm missing something everywhere. God. I don't have anything to... What am I doing? Walk in there. I think I checked everything here. I'm missing over here, maybe? Richard Wagner. Oh, here we go. Ludwig, the original diary is kept in the royal... I've got... Whoops, shit. Ludwig's diary. Ludwig kept a diary from 1869 when he was 24 years old until his death. The diary provides a fascinating look into the mind of this tormented man. The original diary is kept in the royal archives. A few entries are shown on the opposite wall. All right, yeah, so there we go. Richard Wagner. So yeah, then she probably says something about, I gotta get a look at that diary. So there we go. That's probably the shit that I missed. I said back to Riddersburg. I apologize for that. Schloss. Here we go. Hi, did you have a good time? Uh-huh. Anything new? Yes, you had a phone call. Really? A man named Professor Barkley. He said you had his number. I do. Thanks. Yeah, so I apologize, but she's like, I get, she probably said something about, like, I gotta see that diary. I gotta read it. I gotta read the diary. I gotta read the diary of a grown man. A grown man. You know, he should have called it a journal. That would have made him a little less, uh, odd.
Hello? Hi, Professor Barkley. It's Grace. Oh, good. Uh, I have a name for you. It's Herr Josef Dahlmeier, and uh, he specializes in Bavarian history, and uh, I think he's somewhere near you are. Herr Josef Dahlmeier. Great, got a number? Yeah, I do. It's uh, 4982-555-2234. Thanks a lot. Sorry about the bother. Uh, that's no bother. Uh, when are you coming back to school, Gracie? When I figure it out, I'll let you know. Well, be good. No buying, no nothing like... I mean, well, be good's not, not too bad, to be honest. Anyways, it's called Dolmeyer now. The most dramatic call ever. Hello? Hello? Sind Sie Herr Josef Dahlmeier? Yeah, you must be Grace Nakamura, the American history student. Yes. I hear you're interested in Ludwig II. Very. Good. There's something I want to show you. Drive to Berg and Starnberger See. Meet me at the Memorial Chapel. All right. Thank you. Oh, wait. Uh, was there anything you wanted me to look into before we meet? Well, I was hoping you knew something about someone called the Black Wolf. He was a contemporary of Ludwig's. He lived in Prussia, I think, and he was well-connected. Uh, never heard of him, but I'll check. See you there. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, I'm gonna meet you, like, right now. So there we go. We got it all. We got it all. We got it all. I figured out what I did wrong. I'm out. Gerda, I'm out. I'm out. I'm going to where the hell that guy asked me to go. Schweinstein, Sheep Sheep Heart, whatever. Sheep Heart, Sheep Heart, Sheep Sheep Heart. Uh. Welcome to the uh, memorial of, I guess, Ludwig. It's a memorial chapel. Big memorial chapel. Walk faster, Grace. Mm, let's look at this. Oh, there's like a nice cross in the middle of the lake or whatever, for some reason. Very weird. This is where he died. Holy you shit. must be Grace. Yeah, Dalmeyer. Hello. Yosef. I didn't mean to startle you. Oh, you totally did. I wanted you to see it. I feel him here the most, you know, more than at the castle. So, what did you want to know? Well, there's a ton. There's like a ton here, as you can see. Let's talk to you about you first. Professor Barclay says your hobby is Ludwig. Yes. He was the last real king that Bavaria had. As a Bavarian and a history buff, well, that's enough to hook me right there. But there's more, right? He was a romantic, you know. A dreamer. And he was misunderstood, maligned. And... Sounds like you can relate. Me? Hell, I have it easy. At least I live in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. And not every eye in the country is on me. But, yes, I can relate. Yeah, who isn't, who isn't a dreamer? What the hell? It's weird birds. Yeah, I mean, just kind of like look at the... He's like looking at his shoe like... What was there, poopy on that? You know about Ludwig's diary, right? Of course. How can I get my hands on it? <laughs> I'm sorry. I have been trying myself for five years. They keep it locked up tight in the Royal Archives, and they don't let it out. They must think it contains things that will hurt his image. They won't let anyone see it? Not ever? Only one person outside of the government ever got to see it, a biographer, Sir Richmond Chapel. He had friends among the German royals, and they let him look at it. Did you ever try to contact Chapel, pick his brain? No. And I don't believe I never thought of that. If you do and you find out anything, you must share. It's a promise. <laughs> Look at that. 
Yeah, sometimes the most direct route is the, or the, whatever, the fastest route is direct. Tell me about Ludwig. I don't know where to start. There's so much. Politically, the most significant thing about Ludwig II was that he signed over independent Bavarian statehood to Prussia in 1870. Bavaria became a part of United Germany, and Ludwig became a figurehead prince under the Prussian Kaiser. Why do you think he did that? Bavaria has been involved in the Hundred Years' War. People were tired of fighting. Prussia's push to unite the German states made some amount of sense. Still, Ludwig must have had other options. At the very least, he should have negotiated better terms. So what was the real reason? He was manipulated by Bismarck. Hmm. At least that's what I think anyway. What of von Bismarck? Or? What about Ludwig personally? You'll find two perspectives on Ludwig. The view the tourists get is the romantic ideal, Ludwig the tormented loner. Then there is the historian's point of view. Ludwig was plagued with guilt over his sexual orientation and was driven mad with self-loathing. But I take it you're not buying either point of view. <laughs> well, it's all too convenient, isn't it? That he was a devout Catholic, there is no question, and I'm sure there were pressures on him to be normal. But he was no prude. He loved Byron. Mm. Yes. Philosophy, the French court. If anything, Ludwig was too much an egomaniac. He didn't give a damn what anyone thought. And besides, he didn't try to hide any of his relationships. No. If he suffered from anything in his romantic life, it was disillusionment. No one loved him back as purely as he himself loved. How do you know that? Did you read his diary? Well, if it wasn't sexual guilt that tormented him, what was it? I don't know. His diary was filled with self-guilt, but I'm sure it's not about that. If I knew, I'd write my own book, set the record straight, so to speak. So we're going off speculation? Is this what this is? Have you read anything about Ludwig's midnight sleigh rides? Oh, would that have been something? To be out at night and suddenly see him sweep by with his entourage? They say the night agitated Ludwig and that being outdoors and the rushing feeling of the sleigh calmed him down. Sometimes even the sleigh wasn't enough. He would stop in some remote woods, order his servants to stay put and go wandering off by himself for hours. It drove the servants crazy. Well, the night is dark and full of terrors. <laughs> Tell me about Bismarck. Oh, Bismarck. He was the Prussian Kaiser's Chancellor. Not a nice man. Bismarck had a reputation for learning people's weaknesses and manipulating them. It's a matter of record that he had spies on Ludwig's staff. He may even have had a henchman even closer to the king. And he was involved in the conspiracy to declare Ludwig insane. I figured that's probably, he probably, he wants that power. Did you find out anything about the Black Wolf? No, I did. I'd read about him before, but I hadn't realized that was who you were talking about. His name was Godin, Paul Godin. I found a reference to his being called the Black Wolf after you telephoned. I've never heard of him. Who was he? Godin lived on the fringes of the Prussian court. He was handsome, charming, dangerous, or so they say. He was variously rumored to have been a foreign prince, a Prussian spy, even an assassin. Since you were interested in him, I found out some things that are probably true. It said he came from abroad in the mid-1800s, but claimed high German blood. Do you know where he came from? Uh, no. And he was ruthlessly ambitious. He probably found out who held the power, Bismarck, and offered his services. Bismarck was a good judge of talent of that sort, anyway. So Black Wolf was probably a spy. What else do you know about Godin? Or maybe he must they have were done something lovers, remarkable. Right? Bismarck was not a generous man. He liked to string people along with promises, but rarely came through. He did for Godin, though. He gave him a royal title and lands in 1863. And that was the last reference I found to him. Well, how could he just disappear? It's not that unusual. Back then, when you were given a title, you usually changed your name and moved to a place where no one knew your past so you could act with impunity or be a pompous ass and get away with it. Oh. 
Sounds interesting. What else you know, sir? Is there any way to find out what Godin was called after he got his title? Is it that critical? It might be. Very. Well, you could send away for a copy of the entitlement deed, assuming it has been destroyed during one of the wars. Godin's new name would be on it. But you would need a research permit from the government to access those records, and they can be very hard to get. A lot of red tape. Great. There's only a way to circumvent a red tape. What do you know about Ludwig's hunting accident? A couple of years ago, I was introduced to this great old man, a real old world farmer. Well, his grandfather was Richard Horning, Ludwig's equestrian. Oh, he told some great Ludwig stories. Sometimes I get lucky. <laughs> anyway, he said that after the hunting accident, Ludwig got terribly ill, that he had a fever and was acting crazy. They were afraid that the wolf had been carrying a disease or that the bite had gone septic. A wolf bit him? Yes, it's not so unusual. There were a lot of wolves in the Alps back then. The servants were really worried, but Ludwig recovered, physically anyway. Horning's grandfather said it was the fever that broke Ludwig's mind, that he was worse than ever after that. That sucks. I wonder. Let's hear more about it. What do you it. mean Ludwig got worse after the accident? Ludwig always had been a very private person. But after the accident, he got darker, more crazy. Towards the end, he was even forcing his servants to enter his chambers bent over so they couldn't see his face. Horning's grandfather said his temper was fearsome. He would fly into a rage at the least mistake. He's been terrified of Yes, him. well. Horning's grandfather felt sorry for Ludwig, and Ludwig hated his own violence. He was always giving gifts to his servants to apologize. How nice. What a nice monarch. Any more? You mentioned that there were other reasons why Ludwig's servants feared him. Ah, that's another of Horning's mysteries. There's a story about Neuschwanstein. Apparently, there was a period of time of two or three months when Wagner would come and visit him. Wagner? There. Yeah. The two would lock themselves in the singer's hall. Horning's grandfather said the sounds that came from there were awful. Well, the servants had superstitious minds anyway. Some of them quit over it, just walked away. What kind of sounds? Horning's grandfather called them heartbreaking and ungodly. Maybe it was Wagner trying to sing. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, I guess that's all for now. Thanks for your help. It's my pleasure. And if you ever want to talk again, mm -hmm. just give me a call. I'll meet you down. I will. Thanks. Servus. Well, bye. <laughs> all right. So we we pretty much are done here for now. I think if we look down here. I wonder what it felt like under there. Uh, probably terrible, especially if you're drowning. Anyways, apparently I forgot something. Back in Rudersburg. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't forget anything. Good, I'm still on the track to do what I'm supposed to do. Grace Nakamura. Yeah, I know who you are. Thanks. Alright, so I'm gonna actually save the game here and then the next episode. We'll continue to do our uh, information as we can hear uh, what's his name got bit by a wolf and then he became all angry and shit. So in the next episode, we're going to continue exploring and doing research with Grace. I've been against 1913. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.